Day three with Russell Brand. See it first on Rumble. Opinions seem to range from thinking uh, that it's a pretty banal event and it's just a sort of a trade fair and a conference to people thinking that it is a demonstration that there is collusion that takes place between heads of state and powerful corporate figures. Where do you stand and do these, uh, does the Jeffrey Epstein story and the Davos WF story ever intersect? Yeah, there are intersections with the World Economic Forum and the Epstein story. Um, I can talk about that a little bit later. But in general, the World Economic Forum, uh, they describe themselves as the premier organization promoting public-private private partnerships, which is essentially furthering the vision of Mussolini when he uh, defined fascism as corporatism, the merging of the public and private sectors. And if you look, if you actually analyze a lot of the public-private partnerships that the WEF produces, they're very alarming. And I don't think enough people actually spend the time to analyze those partnerships. So one that I've done a lot of reporting on in the past it's called the Partnership Against Cybercrime at the World Economic Forum. It's led by their uh, current, the current head of strategy for the WEF, who is a, um, a top Israeli military intelligence figure uh, who was responsible for basically turning uh, Black Cube, for example, into a Mossad cutout and advising Netanyahu on a whole lot of really uh, damaging policies. And uh, essentially what that partnership uh, against cybercrime involves are Wall Street banks, uh, tech companies with ties to intelligence, and, uh, and the US Department of Justice, the FBI, um, the UK Crime Agency, I believe, and then the Israelis, um, one of their cyber intelligence directorates. And what they argue for is the end of on online anonymity completely, linking all your internet activity to a government issued ID allegedly to fight against cybercrime, and also the emerging of Wall Street banks, their regulators, and intelligence agencies, allegedly as um, a means of hedging against what they believe is an imminent cyber attack that will collapse the existing financial system and then require that people essentially have a government-issued ID to access the internet. And a lot of these policies are being developed by these public-private partnerships under the uh, I guess, umbrella uh, of the WEF, and then they're handed to governments. And a lot of these governments end up enacting that. And if you look at things, of course, like the Young Global Leaders Program, how certain governments around the world have a very uh, high number of WEF-affiliated individuals in their government, they receive a policy from the WEF, they're likely to enact it. So, uh, you know, well, ultimately, what does, that, what does that mean? And I mean, merging Wall Street banks, merging with their regulators is totally insane. But then combining that with like the CIA, which anyway has its origins going back to corrupt Wall Street lawyers and the U.S. oligarchy in general. I mean, that is just a recipe for total disaster. And how does that actually prevent cybercrime uh, when Wall Street banks regularly engage in actual criminal activity that's never prosecuted? You know, it's absolutely insane. And this is the type of policies the WEF sign off on. And so a lot of people uh, do rightly point out that they're unaccountable and, and all of this stuff. Uh, but, you know, sometimes uh, it's low on facts and very much large on hype, uh, some of those narratives. And I think people need to look a lot deeper into what's actually going on and what's actually being um, developed in terms of policy and how those policies are making their way uh, to governments. And also, I think the relationship between the WEF and the UN needs to be interrogated because it was actually Kofi Annan, when he was director general of the UN, speaking at the WEF in the late 90s, he said, thanks to the WEF, the UN has undergone, a, I think he called it a silent or quiet revolution, where now the businesses of uh, the business uh, of the UN are the businesses of the world, showing a pivot of the UN uh, to champion the uh, interests of, of banks and the private sector. That's a very significant influence uh, exerted there by the WEF over a series of decades. And if you look at the history of Klaus Schwab, you know, his, uh, his family history, his relationship to Henry Kissinger, how he was recruited by Henry Kissinger via a CIA-funded program at Harvard, and all of this stuff, it's very alarming. And then, you know, if you look at, you know, intelligence uh, connections, as I, I mentioned a few, the WEF head of strategies and intelligence agent um, at this year's Davos, uh, they've invited uh, several prominent intelligence figures in the U.S. and from other countries around the world to meet in secret with top leaders. Um, you know, people may consider me a conspiracy theorist for thinking that's bad, but I personally think that this is something that needs to be interrogated because these people have historical uh, track records where they've engaged in corruption and criminality. There are some terrifying connections and schemes being proposed there, in particular the idea that Wall Street and the CIA might merge and then self 
regulate in order yeah. to... I mean, we'll take the honesty of Wall Street and the kindness of the CIA. <laughs> and to make sure nothing goes wrong, it can regulate itself. Stay free. See it first on Rumble.